Vinyl record test pressings. What are they? Why do people want them? Why are they desirable? And why are they expensive when you see them for sale occasionally when you're buying records? There's lots of questions about this specific form of the medium, and I'm going to explain to you what they are. Having run a record label now for a few years, I'm very familiar with them, and I'm going to share my thoughts on them in response to people's comments in the Too Many Records Facebook group. I polled the group with what their thoughts are about test pressing, and a lot of people had really interesting thoughts that kind of mirrored my feelings about tests in general. So I'm going to share some of my favorite opinions from the group and then what I think about them. This is a test pressing. Test pressings are something that a pressing plant sends to a label or an artist before they do the full run of records. They usually send between 5 and 10 copies depending on what an artist requests and it allows the artist to listen to it before they press the 200, 500, 1000, whatever the copies are for the run to make sure there are no imperfections, to make sure the audio isn't distorted, to make sure there's no skips, to make sure there's no weird pops in the middle of nowhere, to make sure the pitch doesn't change on certain songs, there's no intergroove distortion. All these things can be caught at the test pressing process, and if there is an issue, they can cut a new batch of test pressings after fixing it, which is a lot easier than fixing a massive run of records after the fact. When you get a record that has a skip in it, and it's not just your turntable causing that skip, that's because someone didn't do their job and they didn't catch it in the test pressing process. Very important to listen to them undistracted, sometimes with really good headphones I like to listen to my test pressings to make sure I hear every little intricacy. If there's an issue in the actual press, it's because the quality control just wasn't there. Now, test pressings, as you can see, come in usually a pretty generic sleeve. They're not always this sleeve, but explains what a test pressing is. The disc itself is usually either white label or has a sticker on it that indicates side A. Very plain, nothing special about them. So why are these desirable? Why do you see test pressings up for sale for hundreds of dollars? And why are labels selling them for a massive premium from the regular product? Well, they're limited and they are a unique stage of the vinyl pressing process. But there's some interesting intricacies that I want to dive into. And again, I'm going to go through these great comments. I'm going to share my responses to them. Ryan said, I like them if they have alternate art, packaging, or even mixes, but white label test pressings of an album I have already hold no desire for me. One caveat would be is if it meant getting the album early, then that is cool. That would be cool. In my experience with test pressings, they usually tend to come months before the actual press happens because they have a queue at these plants and they have to go through the queue in order, but they want to make sure the presses are ready to go when it's your turn to get pressed. So I've received test pressings for my record months in advance before they actually go to press and start shipping to customers. Usually when I've bought test pressings before from labels, they ship them out the same time as the actual record, which I think defeats a little bit of the point. I think as Ryan said, that would be super cool if you were able to get it months early and be able to get this copy of the record before anyone else. That would justify the high price point of a test pressing from a label, in my opinion. Also, I love it when test pressings come in special packages. Occasionally, the best of the best labels will do something special with their test pressings, whether they have a hand-drawn sleeve or a silkscreen sleeve or alternate artwork that kind of accompanies the main art for the release. That kind of thing can help make a test pressing feel more premium and more collectible. Sometimes, and most of the time, labels will just put it in a white sleeve like this and send it off and call it a test pressing and charge a hundred bucks for it. That to me is a little easy. Jason said, I think they're cool to have for albums you collect different pressings of, but I don't think I'd want one as my only copy of an album since you often miss out on the artwork and or liner notes of the released album. I agree. The test pressing tends to have a strike against it when it comes to appreciating the visual aesthetic of a record. A lot of people, myself included, love vinyl because it has this additional medium to it. It has the art of the jacket. It has the beautiful design of the variants of the record. It has inserts or posters or other things to help build the world that the artist is trying to provide for you in addition to just the sound on the disc. Now, with a test pressing, unless they do something like I mentioned that's a special version of it that's an artistic variation, oftentimes you're paying a premium for a copy that is the most bare bones possible with a blank sleeve, blank labels, and that to me is kind of lame. Brandon says, depends on if they're actual tests and not a gimmick of 50 or so press. I have maybe 30 in my collection and they are usually purchased as part of a discography. This is becoming another huge issue in the vinyl community. It's almost warranting its own video, but I'm just going to nestle it into this one for you guys. Labels are starting to press a lot of test pressings and call them test pressings and sell them at an insane markup. Now, sometimes they're signing the test pressings, which can be kind of cool. But when you do more than 10, when you have 50 or 100 or 500 test pressings, that's no longer a test pressing, my dude. That is a full out variant. And if you're charging 100 bucks for each of those, it is fleecing your fans for something that is not a collectible and is just a black variant with a white cover and sometimes a signature. 
length. In recent memory, there are two that stick out for me in particular. One is Black Country New Road. This is an experimental kind of post-punky album that came out this year. For me, it's not my cup of tea, but a lot of people are really loving the music on it. That being said, one of the variants was limited to 500 copies, hand stamped, signed and numbered, and they're calling them test pressings, and they sold them for a premium on their site. 500? When you get a test pressing from a plant, they say, how many do you want, five? And some people say, yeah, that's great. Or some people say, I'll take 10. When you press 500 of them, it is not a test pressing anymore. And to call it that is just insulting. Furthermore, Rap Cats, a label I really enjoyed, there's a lot of great underground hip hop stuff. They did a test pressing for the most recent Mad Lib and Quartet collaboration album. They sold them at $100 a piece and there were 100 copies. That's not a test pressing. That's just a really overpriced black variant. So. This is not a good trend. If you see a test pressing and there's more than 10 copies, run. Charlie says, I avoid them usually because in some cases you may be getting test pressings that were ultimately rejected because of quality issues. I would hope a label did not sell a rejected test pressing as a regular test pressing. Now, that is a real thing though. Rejected test pressings happen when they send out the first batch and there's an issue that needs to be resolved. They don't ask you to destroy those, they don't ask you to send them back. What they do is they just send out another run after they fix the problem. Now, what happens to that first batch? Well, a lot of labels will probably just throw them out or throw them in the archive. I've seen labels sell specifically rejected test pressings before, which sometimes are thrown in as a pre-order bonus, like randomly inserted, or sometimes they'll sell them for not a huge premium, just as a fun thing for collectors. Normally, a test pressing, when I order them from various bands, is from the proper run. It's from the one that actually got approved, and otherwise I'd be pretty annoyed if I got a test pressing and spun it and it had issues with it, and it wasn't called a rejected one. But I think for the most part, you should be good to go if you want a test pressing and you buy one that's properly limited. Ben says, I appreciate them for being an important part of the record pressing process, but I don't personally see the appeal of collecting. I can see how it'd be exciting to get them if you had a hand in making the album, though. That is very true. It's kind of a special thing. If you were involved in an album, having one of the five or ten test pressings is almost like getting a cast and crew gift when you work on a TV show or a movie. I think that's a really cool way to have a test pressing, and it ties you to a specific memory from an album that you helped bring into life. Jace said, As far as listening to them, I've heard that they supposedly sound the best of entire runs of records because they were the first copies pressed with the stamper. And the stampers wear the more copies you press. So a test pressing equals fresh stamper with you equals supposedly better sound quality. That is true. There's something called hot stampers, which if you haven't heard of that, there are some companies, I think there's one in particular that really focuses on this, that really tries to find the first records that came off of the press. Because if you have a setup that's able to tell the intricacies between certain pressings, you'll be able to tell that the fidelity and the quality is higher on the first ones out because stampers do wear over time. Hot stampers tend to go for a lot of money and it's really for the most audiophile of audiophiles. I personally am not into it. I wouldn't pay that much for what may end up being a very negligible or marginal difference on most people's setups, even mine, which is pretty good. But that being said, it is a real thing that the first pressings off the press sound best. So a test pressing by that nature will usually be the best sounding version of that album. That's actually something that goes in the pro column for test pressing. Also, something worth mentioning is that a lot of people love to covet low numbered records. If a record's hand or machine numbered, some people are always seeking out the lowest number. And in theory, that would mean it's the one that's closest to the test pressing, so it's gonna have a better fidelity. But in practice, those records are not being put into the jackets in the order they come off. The jackets are numbered and they just throw in whatever happens. I'm almost scared. And Mike says, the very cool factor is having test pressings for albums that were never actually released. Example, 4-disc CSNY, Joni Mitchell, Coltrane 45 RPM single-sided clarity vinyl. That is actually very cool and doesn't happen as much as you may think, but there are some records that are supposed to be made and for one reason or another never make it to commercial press. Test pressings are made of them, and you can find them, and they're extremely coveted and rare. An example I can think of off the top of my head was before it got a repress not too long ago, Dido's No Angel was only available through test pressings. I think it was a one disc, 200 gram test pressing, and then a four disc box set of the album. It was never actually made, but those test pressings exist, and the album's on there. So that would be a cool grail for huge Dido fans. And there are other albums that never made it to the light of day, like the examples I just mentioned, but there's definitely vinyl that exists in a test pressing form. Actually, I'm curious about this. So if you know of an album that made it to test, but never made an actual commercial press, leave a comment below, because I'm curious what else exists to hunt for. So yeah, that is test pressings in a nutshell. Some people love them, some people don't care at all. What I'd love for you to do is leave a comment with your thoughts. Are you a fan? If so, why? If you're not a fan, also share that. 
And if you own any test pressings, I'd love to hear which ones you've picked up, so leave a comment with that as well. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and maybe learned a little something. There's more coming soon, so thanks for watching Too Many Records. Take it easy.